Welcome to 5 Round MMA, podcast number 15. Today's podcast is brought to you by CounterMove.com, the world's leading MMA fantasy website. On this latest edition of 5 Round MMA, we'll have a full breakdown and review of UFC on Fuel, Silva vs. Stan, the epic showdown in Japan. Please welcome Alex Ramirez and Albert Sita. Thank you very much, our producer Gamble Sita, and it certainly was an epic showdown, right, Albert? Oh man, I think another tsunami was about to hit. With those, <laughs> with, with with those, those, those things swinging, those bombs landing, right? And I guess uh, sushi is not the only thing good that's made in Japan. It looks Wanderlei. like Vanderlei's good. But we'll break that down a little later on. As of right now, Gamble, what do you got for latest news and headlines? It's not even 24 hours, and Diego Sanchez calls out Nate Diaz. He's looking for the Diaz sweep. Yeah, uh, smart move on uh, Diego, you think? Beyond Call. smart. I want to see a Diaz sweep. Uh, I mean, Diaz is right in the middle. This is going to be, a, 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 what do you call it, Sanchez's last run at, at the title. So yeah. he needs to start calling out names and taking them down. Um, it's funny because uh, uh, unlike Eric Hawani, this, this guy, this new guy they had, well, he's not new. He's been on there. He, has a, he wears a horrible coat, though. That guy needs to go <laughs> see a freaking, he needs to go hit up the. Craig Sager style or what? He needs to go hit up the Montreal gym with uh, TriStar. Get some fashion tips, but um, he after every single uh, interview, he would ask the, the the fighter who they want next, and uh, that's that's how he brought up the whole uh, Diaz thing. But I thought it was beautiful. That's what I want to hear. Yeah, got to call out guys, I and mean, might as well always plan ahead, right? What else you got, Gamble? Mark Hunt is looking for a top ten contender, and this is after he beat Stefan Struve. So he's kind of on the to what two fights, three fights in a row now, right? So yeah, but um, I think. Uh, I, I should just change my title to a uh, to what to title maker because uh, Joe Silva Fight obviously maker, he's been, he's been listening and he's doing a good job since I started giving some comments. So go ahead and take out that pad, Joe Silva. Uh, <laughs> let, let me give you another, another one. Blockbuster matchup yeah, here from Because the only thing available for Mark Hunt, and if if he's healthy, is uh, Shane Carwin, and that's an awesome fight because they're both stand up fighters. So Joe Silva, give Shane Carwin a call, see where he's at. And then let's book that. Let's, yeah, let's book that fight because we don't want to see Mark Hunt rest and see what happens with the rest of these heavyweights. That uh, should be a fun one. What else you got, Guillermo? And the last news: Johnny Hendricks is not promised a title shot if he defeats Carlos Condit. Wait, wait, wait! What? Is it for real? Wow! I'm, Carlos Condit is a uh, was interim champion, right? Yeah, and he was also he's also ranked second in the ranked- rankings. Nick Diaz, too, who's getting a title shot, right? Yeah. So, uh, I don't know what this guy has to He has to kill a what man. What did he in the do to... I don't know. He must have literally, like, maybe the Daniel, Daniel's white kids were, like, walking in the back, and Johnny Hendricks must, like might have smacked their, one or, of them or, or something. Their face or something. Yeah, because uh, this kid cannot catch a break. Yeah, he pissed somebody off in the upper UFC brass. <laughs> I feel so I feel bad for him, man. Anyways, is that it for the latest news and headlines, Guillermo? That is it for today. All right, so stick around. We'll have a review of UFC on Fuel TV, Silva versus Stan. All right, everybody. If you like what you hear out there and want to hear more of it, Make sure to follow us on Twitter at 5 Round MMA and always check out the website 5RoundMMA.com. 5 Round MMA is brought to you by SportsScenetv.net. Get all your prep school sports information at SportsScenetv.net. 5 Round MMA is brought to you by True Athletes Training Systems. Unlock your inner athlete at TrueAthletes.com. This pumping party we had in Japan. Now it's time to review UFC on field Silver vs. Stan. I haven't fist pumped like that since first season of Jersey Shore. Yeah, I know uh, Daniel White was kind of uh, talking crap about the undercard. He, he basically said that the last two fights saved the card. But I thought it was interesting fights overall the whole night. I mean, the paper, uh, yeah. paper the, the broadcast started off with uh, Stun Gun against uh, Bahar Dezada. And that was an interesting fight as well, I thought. And listen, Bazal, I don't know how to pronounce your name no more because you don't belong oh, in the UFC. <laughs> he was doing some big smack talk on Twitter, and the Stun Gun said... Listen, man, I don't put up with that. I stun you. Yeah, if it, <laughs> that last round, uh, it was a pretty fun. fun Stunga was yeah. uh, talking crap to him. Yeah. Put a little peace sign at the end. He, he just he just looked at that Basil Haro doesn't speak Korean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure he would have been mad. Yeah, he gave out the peace sign and everything. That, I, that was that was a fun fight. Yeah, Barzar uh, was on a seven fight win streak. All the way just finally stopped. So um, back to the drawing board for him, I guess, right? Yeah, and uh, Stunga and Stock raises up just one more notch. But he's still like a lot of wins a win away from being in the top five. Yeah, and the uh, next fight was uh, Ronnie Yaya against Mitsu- Mitsuro 
Hirota. Which started was, off one of the many controversial decisions, you can say. But you didn't think Ronnie Ayala won that fight? No, I think uh, he did enough to, I guess, uh, win in the judges. But uh, I think uh, Mitsu uh, gave it to him. And, I mean, I don't even know what a 10-8 round is no more. I don't know what. <laughs> I don't even know why they have a 10-point system. It should just be like a 2-1 two, two system. Because I when I win, has anybody ever got a 10-7? I mean, do you have to literally, like, the guy has to be in the brink of, like, death to get a 10-7? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. But um, it, was, uh, it was a controversial one, too. Ronnie Yaya's back on the win streak now. So, yeah, we'll see. It'll kind of slow you back up the ladder again. And uh, probably the, the, main, the main chunk of the broadcast kicked off with Yushin Okami against Hector Lombard. And um, I don't care what anyone was saying about Okami. That's embarrassing. You want to fight like that? that? That's an embarrassment. You want to go in there and just get the W? That, that's that's, so that's, that's it, horrible. Did he earn a victory or just no. really survive it? Man, he survived it. And, and again, that, that, that third round was pretty scary. Yeah, for and, and again, he didn't do nothing in the third round, and that's not a 10-8. What, what's a 10-8? I, they need to redefine whatever 10-8, 10-7 are because Yoshi and Okami didn't land one thing on the third round it was all Hector Lombard but at the same time uh, Okami did what he had to do to win he not to uh finish he did just enough to win so it was almost the same thing with his Alan uh, Alan Belcher fight so do you think is he just mainly fighting just to keep his job or is he like hungry for a title shot because uh, John Fitch is a perfect example that kind of fighting style doesn't really get you anywhere in the UFC nowadays. Yeah, and, he, and the fact that Okami can't speak English, so he can't smack talk. He can't sell himself. <laughs> yeah, so true. he's kind of like in a parallel here. What's he gonna do? I mean, continue the fight this way, or kind of go what didn't want to I, go? I honestly think he's just more worried about getting those wins after that vicious uh, loss to Anderson Silva. He just probably just wants a bunch of wins under his belt and Tim Boach. So I mean, I, I don't think he wants to risk it no more and get knocked out. So he's just trying to get some wins in him. Yeah, but. I mean, but at the same time, um, Hector Lombard, the reason he even made it where he's at was because he was an explosive fighter. He came in there and bra, and, I mean, he waited until the third round to actually really to come, come out. out. Yeah. And um, I, I, I don't know why he's doing this. I mean. I think it's like the UFC jitters it, still. Is it, he still it, nervous going in the it, ha- it has to be that he puts so much pressure on himself, but he has to understand there's a reason why he made it to that level, and he has to stick to it. So what do you think now for Lombard? Is he an elite, at a middleweight contender? No, he he's an elite contender. I mean, if you look at should every, he drop down? He's kind of a short dude. Yeah, I mean. he, he's short and stocky. He has a, a a weird frame. Yeah, if he could drop down, that'll be his best bet. But I mean, it, at the same time, okay, yeah, he lost against Tim Boach and Yoshin Okami, but it wasn't like he got dominated or destroyed or anything like that. But at the same time, he's not showing that he's able to. Matchup against Anderson Silva, but oh yeah, definitely not. He he needs either one big win at 185, or like you said, yeah, see if he can go. If he can go to 170, that's his best bet. Yeah, but you think like, like Anderson Silva is not going to be. If he were to fight Anderson Silva, it's not going to be on the ground. It'd be a stand up bang fight. It's just like just bad matchups for him, right? You think was to was go yeah. Uh, uh, Okami just a horrible matchup for him. You think yeah, it, it it was a horrible matchup. But I mean, you saw what we could do in the third round, even if he has a bad matchup. It just he needs to get the right mindset. I still believe in Hector, uh, so yeah. Hopefully they give him another shot. I mean, yeah, just one more, but it's not looking so good since his price tag is kind of high. Yeah, and uh, after that, the dream returned. Diego Sanchez defeated uh, Takanori Gomi. It, it was a split decision. What you it was about? a rough. It was a rough dream, but yeah. uh, I mean, he he's been out for a long time. Uh, he's making his way back down to one fifty five. So you have to put all that into consideration. Had, had trouble cutting weight. Yeah, too. he didn't. He, he didn't make the he, weight. He had to drop like fifty pounds. So I mean, um, it wasn't the best Diego Sanchez, but uh, he at least showed that he, you know, okay, I I'm rusty. Uh, he still showed a glimpse of the Diego Sanchez that could win and make yeah, a run. I and, think yeah. And, and for someone like Gomi, not to put him away when he's when when this is Diego Sanchez worse. And Gomi, Gomi wasn't could. able to put him away, so that just means when he uh, at at his best, he's going to run through this division. Yeah, I thought it was like a real a questionable fight, like kind of two awkward game plans. Yeah, and they just said it wasn't a. I think it was a bad matchup for both guys. I think they couldn't do what they wanted to do, and they're kind of forced at a standstill. But uh, people are saying that Gomi won the fight, but like, do you, did he win the fight? I mean, no, I have. Did no, he do enough to win the fight? No, I have no idea where they got that. Diego got two takedowns in the first one, aggressive takedowns. He kept landing the, uh, that kick to the liver uh, a yeah, lot, he, a lot during that Diego fight. Deo Sanchez, I mean, 
and then the, well, in the third round, Gomi didn't even want to exchange anymore in the last minute. Yeah, I saw Gomi's uh, stuffs, and he had a lot of jabs. But I think Diego countered with being a little more uh, aggressive, aggressive yeah. and the, I think the liver kicks too as well. Nobody's counting the liver yep. kicks. But um, so Diego, is he uh, – Diego's returned. Is, should other 155ers be scared or what? Well, he didn't scare anybody, but uh, they should be worried because that was just Diego at like 10%. When Diego gets up to the sixty-five percent, they'll start. They start looking his way. Yes, yeah, so like as we said earlier, he's already calling out uh, Nate Diaz, who was a former which is one perfect. Contender. And I'm pretty sure he's going to be more fit, more motivated when he comes to that fight. And I hope Diaz if they just. Make it. And I hope Diaz just watches that Gomi fight and underestimates Diego Sanchez because that was ten percent, five percent. Diego Sanchez, wait until you see him when he's full. Yeah, and also they made a point about Gomi, uh, kind of switching up game plans, being more. Um, and his fighting style, do you think that is it too late for uh, a, a new Gomi, or what do you think? Like, uh, I wish this Gomi would have came out when he first came to the UFC. UFC, but yeah, a little bit too late. Uh, I think Gomi only has two more fights in him, and if if the one of those two is a loss, it's pretty much done. Yeah, there's a lot of miles on him, man. And um, after that was a co main event. Oh, man. Heavyweight showdown. Mark Hunt needs to run for president because I will vote for him. Why? Because he's so charming on the microphone or what? Yes. He, the guy <laughs> is charming answers. on the microphone. <laughs> he's not scared to look at danger in the eye by taking himself down and putting himself in horrible positions against uh, Stefan Struve. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he made it a point like to put like you know, like the uh, Fabrizio Verdooms and Frank Mears of the heavyweight division? <laughs> I'm not scared to go on the ground. If he, if he didn't, he sure told him. He said, listen, go Man, <laughs> I'll find a way to get I, out. I like how it's uh, not even like technique, not leverage. He's put kind of just, you know just pull his way, <laughs> pull him around, pull his leg around. up, pull his leg away from uh, even his own corner. Drew. were begging him to stand <laughs> up, back up, but he didn't care. But that was awesome, awesome, awesome fight. Um, I think everyone could see the knockout coming because Stefan Struve uh, was taking some heavy shots. It was just a matter of which one was going to land big. And uh, his game plan was kind of what was his game plan? You think like just to stay on the ground? Because even like the third round, he just kind of gave up and just. All right, punch me in the face, Mark Hunt. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, and because of it, he suffered a broken jaw. Oh, man. And uh, if you guys haven't looked up the x-rays, go Google that. Oh, dude, it, it literally cracked right down the line. So th- every time Stephen Shue fights, they always say, oh, he's such a young guy, up and coming. But how many knockouts can you take? He, like, every other fight, he's well, getting he's, knocked out. He literally got his jaw broken already. So Yeah, so is yeah. he an elite heavyweight or is he just kind of like – is he pay-per-view caliber or kind of – FX Fuel TV. He's FX Fuel, event, but what sucks event. for for Stefan Struve is two things. One, he started way too early in the UFC, and they just fed him monsters, and he wasn't just. I mean, he's good, but they needed to let him develop a little bit more. It's kind of uh, uh, and then sink or swim in the yeah, UFC, uh, baptism so th- by th- fire. That, that's what sucks. And the second thing is his frame. I mean, he there's no way he can move to another division, so he's gonna have to uh, s- uh, seal that jaw and man up and. Keep on going. Yeah. And after that was the epic showdown. I think I think it really blew people's uh, minds away. Wanderlei Silver and Brian Stan. It sounded like batting practice in there. I thought someone was in there hitting baseballs because, dude, it was all you hear is cracks left and right. Yeah, this only went for uh, the first round. It was amazing. I'm telling you, it must be the soil in Japan that just fuels Vanderlei because if, if Brian Stan would have fought Vanderlei anywhere else in the world, Vanderlei would have been knocked out, ice round. cold. But, man. He, he would have fell down, what, four times in that Yeah, first round? but it just the whole, I think just something in him said, dude, I'm in Japan. I'm going down I ain't sand. going down like that. <laughs> the sun rises in Japan. It doesn't fall. Yeah. <laughs> Vanderlei <laughs> Vander was is, determined not to. This Silva. Um, so, Brian said after the fight, showed he's a true class oh, act, man. man. This guy, uh, he's incredible. Um, I, I I, I, it's hard to talk bad about Brian Stan. It's he hard. It's it, hard. So it's it hard great. not to even respect the man after the, the way he he shows himself in defeat. The way he shows himself before the fight. I mean, he even goes. He even said. He even had a quote saying that um, he, he would never be as good as Vanderlei was in his prime. I mean, the guy. The guy is a class act. I mean, I, I have nothing bad to say. I, he's awesome. I mean, I, w- I hope he he stays in the UFC for a long time. I think he will. But he he uh, uh, sent out a tweet. Uh, the last day, saying that he's going to step away from and not think about MMA for a while. Uh, he obviously has a super successful broadcasting career, and at th- and his, he's already in his thirties already. Kind of got a late start to MMA. Do you think his title? Like he was on a fast track to a title shot, wasn't he? And now it's kind of yeah. like I think that ship kind of sailed for a little bit now. But if you look at the one eighty five, there's still some fights that you look like. Oh, Brian Stang 
can get a lot of wins in the 185 before Anderson. So, so, I mean, hopefully he has three more fights, four more fights in him. And by then, Anderson still retires. And who knows, maybe he's back into the title hunt. I mean, Joe Sonnen made, went up to 205. I mean, he didn't do that bad against Michael Bisming. He just has to work on some of his game, and he probably get past Michael Bisming too. So he's not out. Yeah. Um, who is Wendley Silva out? What do you think? Should he be out after that? Should he bow out after that epic performance? I think uh, they just need to book him for just Japan. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the only time uh, I've seen Vanderlei, uh, a, a, a glimpse of him in the Pride Days, which they hoped for when he came over. So um, I'm just hoping Vanderlei fights maybe two more times. I'm, I'm hoping they're all in Japan. And he just gets a couple wins and retires because there's no way he can compete it, with the, it's the like we, elite. Yeah, we've heard this song before. Every time Wanderlei wins, oh, Wanderlei's back. He doesn't need to retire. He can still keep fighting, and then he'll suffer a loss. And yeah. blah, blah, blah. It, it, it had more to do with the situation and his mindset uh, that last night than, than anything else. So, I mean. So, if he does continue to fight, the whole reason why he dropped on the 185 was to get a title shot, correct? Yeah. And at 205, he looked pretty good. So if his remaining fight, should he stay at 205 just to fight? Because no, he's not fighting for a title shot anymore, obviously, that's right? That's true. I, he should fight 205 if the matchup is good. Like Brian Stan, I mean, he, he Brian Stan didn't look humongous next to him. Yeah. But there's some huge 205 people out there. And uh, So if the matchup's right, yeah, go 205. I mean, pretty much I think it should be like wherever the, he wants to take the weight. They should uh, take it. I mean, he only has a couple more fights. Just give him what he wants. Yeah. Any, any fighters pop to mind real quick for uh, Wanderlei? Maybe an 205. Exciting, 205? exciting fight. I heard people oh. throwing around Dan Henderson again, maybe. I mean, that would be awesome. Dan Henderson versus uh, Vanderlei to do that rematch. But um, Shogun, maybe? Uh, I'd rather see the Shogun one than Dan Henderson because uh, I don't want to see the H bomb being dropped on Vanderlei. <laughs> yeah, but certainly was an epic showdown in Japan. I think the fans got epic. a lot. Uh, so coming up, we'll have a, a Bellator recap. A lot of news going on in the world of Bellator, so stick around, guys. All right, everybody. If you like what you hear out there and want to hear more of it, make sure to follow us on Twitter at 5 Round MMA and always check out the website, 5RoundMMA.com. 5 Round MMA is brought to you by SportsScenetv.net. Get all your prep school sports information at SportsScenetv.net. 5 Round MMA is brought to you by True Athletes Training Systems. Unlock your inner athlete at trueathletes.com. The toughest tournament in sports still continues. Now we'll have a Bellator recap. Yeah, uh, the lightweight tournament has a uh, final set now as Saad Awad is going to take on David Caveman Rickles. And this is big news because Bellator's biggest star is the lightweight champion, Michael Chandler. Yes, it is. And, uh... Saad Awad, if you people don't know, he's from the Inland Empire. And he's a native here. and um, Out of Millennia MMA Gym. Yeah, and, and he was a replacement. And look at him Make in the finals. Noise. Two, two first-round knockouts, quick knockouts. Yes, and uh, if uh, David K-Man Rickles uh, is a man of his word, he said he's going to stand and bang with them too, which <laughs> I highly recommend he doesn't. Uh, it's like uh, two things, like a perfect storm. Uh, came out of nowhere, and he's on a roll. And like, if you know Saad's fight... Like blood in the water, he's like a shark, dude. He'll he goes for the kill every time. Yeah, super aggressive, super aggressive. Best thing that can happen in Bellator because uh, it's a wonderful story, and uh, he he he's there. He's getting there. Yeah, one more step, and then Michael Chandler. And then uh, the light heavyweight champ is a new, we got a new crown champion Christian Mumbumbu lost. Yeah, um, but to Attila Vey. Yeah, to decision. I mean, I didn't. Neither one really impressed me when I saw that fight. Uh, I mean, King Bone really dropped the ball by getting knocked out. Yeah, you made a point that it's kind of the weakest division as far as yeah. star power wise, right? Yeah, star power. It's the weakest division, and they really. I mean, Bellator needed King more more than King Mo needed Bellator. Yeah, and this was actually Christian uh, Mumpubu's first title fight. <laughs> yeah, even though he won it in he, 2011. Yeah, and he's also coming off of a loss. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he, he wasn't looking like a strong champion to begin with. And um, the only thing that can probably save this division now is if Newton wins, the guy that knocked out King Mo. Yeah. Because that's just saying, like, oh, okay, uh, he was good enough to be King Mo and champion, set up for the rematch on season nine. Yeah, it kind of makes sense that they, you know, that they brought in Babalu and King Mo for the division. Kind of get more name in the light heavyweight division. So. Yeah, because oh, yeah, uh, Boom Bapu Bapu isn't there no more. So, and uh, another big news is that their featherweight champion uh, Pat Curran doesn't have an opponent now. His original opponent, Down Strauss, is uh, no longer active. Yeah, um, 
it, <laughs> the guy looks like Ricky Williams, so I'm not surprised he got pulled over for a uh, possession of marijuana. marijuana. But um, like Matt Riddle said, he was just taking his medicine. <laughs> yeah. So uh, make sure to uh, catch Bellator every Thursday on Spike TV. Numerous, numerous storylines go on every week. So And it's free fights, great fights always going on in Bellator. So uh, that's it for today. Make sure to uh, check in next week. We'll have a full re- preview of UFC 158, St. Pierre versus Diaz. So make sure to Talking follow. What? Uh, there you go. Preview <laughs> next week. <laughs> make sure to follow us on Twitter at 5 Uh Subscribe to us on YouTube and iTunes. And always check out the website, 5 MMA.com. Albert, you got some final words? Yeah, I just want to thank our executive producer, Anthony Seriana, our producer, Guillermo Sita, and even though he came late, our sound engineer, Ollie the Trolley. Uh, thanks, everyone, for listening.